Greetings. This is the one you've known as Jesus the Christ. Many people suffer from feeling a lack of connection. They feel disconnected from life, disconnected from themselves, and disconnected from God. This is the illness that is the ego. It feels separate and alone, vulnerable and at the mercy of life. This is not the truth, and this lie underlies humanity's suffering. People connect with each other in all sorts of ways, through the Internet, by text and phone calls, at parties and community events, at work and at home. Most people's lives are filled with such connections, and yet many still feel alone and disconnected. What people are yearning for is not just physical or mental connection. Being with people is often not enough to feel connected and can result in people feeling even more alone and separate. What people are yearning for is a deeper connection, and that is what I want to talk about today. What does connecting with others mean to you? For many, especially women, it means sharing their emotions, particularly their negative feelings and pain. This often passes as intimacy, and it often does create a deeper bonding than more ordinary, less personal conversations. But what exactly are people bonding over when they share their unhappiness, fears, complaints, and pain? There is a word for this, commiserate. They are bonding over their misery. Sometimes commiserating with others brings comfort, but often it does not. Sharing your misery with others, commiserating, is not as helpful as many assume. Often what happens is, just as the word commiserate implies, two people fall into the same negative state. Either one pulls the other into his or her negative state, or two people who are in that state find each other. They don't necessarily help each other move out of that state, which is what would be healing and what would bring true comfort. These interactions often pass as and are intended to be offerings of solace or compassion, but more often than not, they devolve into reinforcing each other's negativity. How can that be useful? Commiseration is the ego's version of compassion, but in doing this, the ego is more interested in getting its negative perspective validated than in being helpful to another. It's no wonder that such interactions are not ultimately satisfying to anyone, although there is a delicious aspect to them because the ego loves drama and loves having its perspective validated. So many of the conversations the ego enjoys are stories of pain and drama. It's also no wonder that this is what most movies and TV programs are about. Such programs have little value and only reinforce the ego's way of looking at life. Ain't it terrible, the ego loves to conclude. Rarely do you hear people getting together and proclaiming how wonderful life is, and this certainly wouldn't do for movies or TV. But you already know this. What you might not be as clear about is what takes its place. How do you connect with people soul to soul rather than ego to ego? For one thing, the connection doesn't even have to be soul to soul. It can be ego to soul, and that will still be satisfying. As long as someone is connected within themselves to the truth, to presence, then something magical happens. Even an egoic conversation can become enlightening because it's bound to not remain on the level of ego, assuming the one who's being present doesn't get pulled in by the other person's ego. So that's good news. 
You are meant to help each other this way. True help and wise advice about how to live your life doesn't come from people's egos. Although you might get some good advice about the stock market or how to do something. The most enriching conversations are ones that drop into a place where love, wisdom, and peace flow. This is what provides a true and satisfying sense of connection, and nothing else will really do. So how do you get there? How do you have a deep and satisfying conversation and connection with someone? The answer might surprise you. You might assume that achieving this takes some special gift or talent, but it's easier than you may think. The secret is to be quiet and listen closely to the other person. Just listen. Set yourself, the sense of me, aside and just be there without referring to your thoughts and opinions. The key is to listen to the person, not to the thoughts going through your own mind. Be with that person from stillness, presence. It makes sense that this might be the answer, since being quiet and listening is the opposite of what the ego generally does, the opposite of your default, your programming. Your default is to give voice to the voice in your head, which is usually the ego's voice. Doing the opposite of what your ego would do is a good tactic. It's bound to bring you better results than following your default. To not follow your programming, it's often necessary to wait a moment and say and do nothing, since the ego's tendency is to immediately speak or take action. The ego is usually quick to offer an opinion, give advice, talk about itself, or just chatter about nothing, rather than experience quiet. Listening and waiting makes room for the possibility of doing something other than giving voice to your ego. So the first step in going deeper when you're with others is a very easy one. Be quiet. Listen and wait. What you're waiting for is something deeper within you that wants to speak, your true self, which doesn't speak as much or as often as the ego. Your true self or divine self doesn't express itself as opinions, although it might offer helpful information. Or it might share a personal story that illustrates something that would be helpful. But unlike the ego, the divine self's storytelling is for the benefit of the other person, not for the purpose of talking about itself. That's a big difference. This deeper sharing is not driven by the ego's need for attention or to be right. It is clean, clear, and free of self and selfish motives. Speaking from this deeper knowing feels good centered and peaceful, while speaking from the ego feels tense and agitated. When the ego speaks, you feel contracted, even as you're trying to feel good about yourself. The ego is always trying to feel good about itself, but it goes about it in the wrong way. In a conversation, the more you try to get for yourself, the more contracted you feel while the less self-involved you are, the more fulfilled and connected you feel. When you're giving voice to your true self, words come out of your mouth without having thought about them beforehand. You aren't even sure what you're going to say next, but you know that something is moving you to speak, and you trust that. When you're done speaking, you feel good, and so does the other person. That is how you know you're connected to the truth. When you're connected to the truth and speaking truth, you're connected to Source, to God. And when you connect others with the truth, they feel connected to God. That is where a true sense of connection comes from, from both people being connected to their true nature. 
connection comes from this feeling of oneness with another, the recognition that your essential nature is the same. What do I mean by being connected to the truth? Mostly, I just mean that you're connected to the present moment. You're in the here and now and noticing how you're being moved to speak and act in that moment by something other than your thoughts. That's all. You're being true to the moment, true to life and the role that life wants you to play. This is a different way of being. Life is pulling your strings, not the ego. Life has always been pulling your strings. Life has always been unfolding life and specifically your life in a certain direction. And you are either moving in that same direction or not. It's your choice. You may not be aware of that choice, but you have a choice to open to life, listen to what it wants from you, and play that role. Or listen to the voice in your head, the voice of your ego and conditioning, and play that role. Either way, it's fine with life, but one way will be much more pleasant and beneficial all around. That's what I'm pointing you to when I suggest that you align with the truth. You can feel life's movement, its will within you, if you give it have a chance to be noticed. It's easy to know what the ego would do and say. That comes through the voice in your head loud and clear. But how your soul or divine self wants you to move and speak is less obvious and will be missed if you don't tune into that and try to ascertain what that is. That's why being quiet and listening and waiting is so important. If you don't do these things, your true self's wisdom, love, compassion, and joy won't have a chance to be expressed by you. And it's expressing these things that draws you closer to others in a meaningful way. As long as you are connected to your ego, you will never truly connect with others. Only if you are connected to your soul, to the truth, to essence or presence, will you connect with others in a meaningful way. Connection starts there, with your own connection to God. If you feel connected to God, connected with the truth of the moment, and therefore acting as an instrument of God, your action and speech will cause others to fall into alignment with God. They will enjoy being close to you because you bring out the best in them by reflecting to them their inherent goodness. By offering something of true value to someone, such as compassion, peace, love, or wisdom, you will connect more meaningfully with them than when you're trying to get something from them. And the only way this can happen is if you are full and content within yourself, if you're truly not needing anything from them. That is only possible if you're connected within yourself to the source of all happiness and peace. The reason there's such a lack of connection in this world is that people are connecting with others to get something for themselves. This will never lead to a true sense of connection. But of course, unless and until people are connected inside to the divine within, they will seek connection outside themselves in this way. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all else will be given unto you. Become full and complete within yourself by connecting to that which fulfills and completes you, your divine self, your soul, and you will attract to you what you need, and you will need very little. This needing little is a very attractive place. I hope you understand that there's nothing you have to do to connect with Source, with God. You are always connected to God through the spark of God that resides within you. How could you not be? You only have to become aware of this connection, and from there your connections with others can blossom.
All I can do is point you in this direction and explain what stands in the way of it. When you are in the presence of others, listen inside yourself for that still small voice, and that will help them connect with their own deeper knowing and love as well. Thank you for being here. I am with you always.